The next story that we're going to read is all about the tiny C. Don't forget to follow this cursor and look at the word it's pointing so you can learn how to read. Let's get started. It is autumn. A strong wind is blowing. It blows flower seeds high in the air and carries them far across the land. One of the seeds is tiny, smaller than any of the others. Will it be able to keep up with the others? And where are they all going? One of the seeds flies higher than the others. Up, up it goes. It flies too high and the sun's hot rays burns it up. But the tiny seed sails on with the others. Another seed lands on a tall and icy mountain. The ice never melts and the seed cannot grow. The rest of the seeds fly on, but the tiny seed does not go as fast as the others. Now, they fly over the ocean. One seed falls into the water and drowns. The others sail on with the wind, but the tiny seed does not go as high as the others. One seed drifts down onto the desert. It is hot and dry and the seed cannot grow. Now, the tiny seed is flying very low, but the wind pushes it on with the others. Finally, the wind stops and the seeds fall gently down on the ground. A bird comes by and eats one seed. The tiny seed is not eaten. It is so small that the bird does not see it. Now, it is winter. After their long trip, the seeds settle down. They look just as if they are going to sleep in the earth. Snow falls and covers them like a soft white blanket. A hungry mouse that also lives in the ground eats a seed for his lunch. But the tiny seed lies very still and the mouse does not see it. But the tiny seed lies very still and the mouse does not see it. Now it is spring. After a few months, the snow has melted. It is really spring. Birds fly by. The sun shines. Rain falls. The seeds grow so round and full. They start to burst open a little. Now they are not seeds anymore. They are plants. First, they sent roots down into the earth. Then their little stems and leaves begin to grow up toward the sun and air. There is another plant that grows much faster than the new little plants. It is a big fat weed and it takes all the sunlight and the rain away from one of the small new plants and that little plant dies. The tiny seed hasn't begun to grow yet. It will be too late. Hurry, but finally it too starts to grow into a plant. The warm weather also brings the children out to play. They too have been waiting for the sun and springtime. One child doesn't see the plants as he runs along the or along and oh, he breaks one. Now it cannot grow anymore. The tiny plant that grew from the tiny seed is growing fast, but its neighbor or neighbor grows even faster or faster. The tiny plant that grew from the tiny seed is growing fast, but its neighbor grows even faster. Before the tiny plant has three leaves, the other plant has seven. And look, a bud, and now even a flower. But what is happening? First, there are footsteps. Then, a shadow looms over them. Then, a hand reaches down and breaks off the flower. A boy has picked the flower to give to a friend. It is summer. Now, the tiny plant from the tiny seed is all alone. It grows on and on. 
It doesn't stop. The sun shines on it and the rain waters it. It has many leaves. It grows taller and taller. It is taller than the people. It is taller than the trees. It is taller than the houses. And now a flower grows on it. People come from far and near to look at this flower. It is the tallest flower they have ever seen. It is a giant flower. All summer long, the birds and bees and butterflies come visiting. They have never seen such a big and beautiful flower. Now it is autumn again. The days grow shorter, the nights grow cooler, and the wind carries yellow and red leaves past the flower. Some petals drop from the giant flower and they sail along with the bright leaves over the land and down to the ground. The wind blows harder. The flower has lost almost all of its petals. It sways and bends away from the wind, but the wind grows stronger and shakes the flower. Once more, the wind shakes the flower and this time the flower's seed pod opens. Out come many tiny seeds that quickly sail far away on the wind. Next story is all about the grouchy ladybug. It was night and some fireflies danced around the moon. At five o'clock in the morning, the sun came up. A friendly ladybug flew in from the left. It saw a leaf with many aphids on it and decided to have them for breakfast. But just then a grouchy ladybug flew in from the right. It too saw the aphids and wanted them for breakfast. Good morning, said the friendly ladybug. Go away, shouted the grouchy ladybug. I want those aphids. We can share them, suggested the friendly ladybug. No, they're mine, all mine screamed the grouchy ladybug or do you want to fight with me or for them rather if you insist answered the friendly ladybug sweetly it looked the other bug straight in the eye the grouchy ladybug stepped back it looked less sure of itself oh you're not big enough for me to fight it said then why don't you pick on somebody bigger i'll do that screeched the grouchy ladybug. I'll show you. It puffed itself up and blew off. At six o'clock, it met a yellow jacket. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the yellow jacket, showing its stinger. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At seven o'clock, it met a stag beetle. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the stag beetle, opening its jaws. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At eight o'clock, it came across a praying mantis. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the praying mantis, reaching out with its long front legs. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At nine o'clock, it almost flew into a sparrow. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, want to fight? If you insist, said the sparrow, opening its sharp beak. Oh, you're not big enough said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At 10 o'clock, it saw a lobster. The grouchy ladybug wanted to fight. If you insist, said the lobster, stretching its claws. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At 11 o'clock, it bumped into a skunk. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, want to fight? If you insist, said the skunk, starting to lift its tail. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At twelve noon, 
it spotted a boa constrictor. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the snake, right after lunch. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At one o'clock, it happened upon a hyena. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the hyena, laughing eerily and showing its teeth. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At two o'clock, it met a gorilla. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the gorilla, beating its chest. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At three o'clock, it ran into our... It ran, at three o'clock, it ran into a rhinoceros. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the rhinoceros, lowering its horn. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At four o'clock, it encountered an elephant. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist said the elephant, raising its trunk and showing its big tusks. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At five o'clock, it met a whale. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? But the whale did not answer at all. You're not big enough anyway, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At five fifteen, the grouchy ladybug said to one of the whale's flippers, Hey, you, want to fight? But it couldn't answer, so it flew on. Or, but it got no answer, so it flew on. At 5.30, the grouchy ladybug said to the whale's fin, Hey, you, want to fight? But it got no answer, so it flew on. At a quarter to six, the grouchy ladybug said to the whale's tail, Hey, you, want to fight? Oh, where is it? I press it too hard. And the whale's tail gave the grouchy ladybug such a slap across the land. At six o'clock, the grouchy ladybug arrived right back where it had started from. Ah, here you are again, said the friendly ladybug. You must be hungry. There are still some aphids left. You can have them for dinner. Oh, thank you, said the wet, tired, and hungry ladybug. Soon, all of the aphids were gone. Thank you, said the leaf. You are welcome, answered both ladybugs, and they went to sleep. The fireflies, who had been sleeping all day, came out to dance around the moon and that's the end of this video thank you for watching and don't forget to like share and subscribe have a good day everyone